welcome to my first screencast. My name is Simon Archer. Um, I'm doing this because I'm currently playing around on creating an application which integrates with the PARS platform. Um, and because I've been playing around with it for quite a bit now, I thought I might actually take what I've learned um, and create a video for someone else out there who's doing the same. So what I'm doing is that I'm going to demonstrate how to integrate PARS into a Swift project. Um, a lot of the documentation on PARS.com, there's a mix and match of Objective-C and Swift, and I find it quite challenging to try and just figure it out um, and find all the Swift code for it. So I'm just going to condense it into one screencast where I'll show you how to do it and get it up and running relatively quickly. Um, first things first, this isn't going to be an introduction to Xcode. I'm going to assume you know what Xcode is and you have Xcode. I'm not going to show you the different panels, what they mean, etc. Um, and this isn't an introduction to Swift itself either. So I'm going to assume if you're watching this that you're familiar with Xcode, um, the app developer program, and that you're familiar with Swift. At least that's, I'm not going to explain, you know, all the syntax involved. I'm just going to show you the code to use. Um, I might go pretty quickly through this, but because it's a video, um, you're obviously, of course, free to pause and, you know, kind of catch up if you need to catch up. So this is, again, just to show you how to create a new project in Xcode and how to get your PARS platform working and how to save an object to your PARS database in just a couple of minutes. All right, so first things first, of course, is to go to PARS.com. If you don't know what it is, there's some information about it, but basically they're a platform where they handle quite a bit of your, your back-end stuff for your application. So they help with saving objects to a, a, a database, for instance. They help with push notifications. They help with server-side code you want to run. Um, I'm not an expert on it, but basically if you're looking to get application up and running with minimal effort, something like pass.com is a service which allows you to do that. They have a pricing structure, but the way that it works is that if you're uh, basically creating a new application from the ground up, the pricing won't affect you. It's free up until a point. So let me just show you exactly how it possibly works. So as you can see that they have a free version of the PaaS service that has 20 gigs of file storage, 20 gigs of database storage, two gigs, two terabytes of data transfer, and a background job, a million unique recipients for push notifications, and analytics is free, etc. And what they try and do, I'm assuming, is that they're trying to make it easy for newcomers to application, or if you're building an application, to kind of pull you into it because it's free from the get-go. And then as soon as you start hitting more than a million unique recipients, so if I'm not mistaken, this kind of means more than a million users, unique users to application, and your app starts being used quite a bit. People are making requests to your application greater than 30 requests a second. Then, then they start implementing a, a fee structure. And so yeah, it's kind of like a good problem to have if you ever get to that point, because it means that your application is doing well, and then you can decide whether you want to continue using PARS and paying for the service, or pull away from PARS and use your own service, but that's not going to be part of this video. So what I'm trying to say is that PARS is free, and it's a great way just to get an application running and in the App Store with the database and everything else with it. So it's, it's pretty cool for that. So you're going to have to create an account in PARS. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but it's pretty straightforward. Once you create an account, you'll go to your dashboard. So you'll, you'll see something like this. All right, so you're going to create a new application. And we're going to call this pause test, OK? Because I'm just going to show you how to integrate pause into a test application. So you create your pause test. And then you can go to your quick start guide. And I'll take you to kind of walk you through the process here. So they have a couple of options on what you want to get quick started on. Uh, we want to get quick started on the data side. So we just want to save objects to a database now. Um, because we're using uh, Swift, which is a mobile platform, we choose mobile. 
and we choose iOS because this will be iOS specific right now. So we choose the iOS platform. So you'll see now that they don't have a Swift option, but we're going to go with Objective C, and we're going to put into an existing project. So we're going to create a project in Xcode and just kind of follow the steps to implement PARs into a project that you've created. So click Existing Projects. Now it takes you to this page over here where it instructs you how to install the SDK. So what you can do is you're going to click the Download the SDK button and then it'll download it to your download folder which is happening over there now. In the meantime, let's create our project. So I'm going to go to my desktop now. I'm going to go to Xcode. I'm going to create a new Xcode project. Um, single view application is fine for this. We're going to call this my pause app. Doesn't really matter what you call it. I'm going to go next. All these options here you can leave as is. It's not going to be the, the point of this demonstration. You're going to save it to a location. So we're just going to save it where my default application is. And you'll then get to this page here. So now we've created a Swift project. All right, so you can tell that by this .swift file names on the left hand side here. Once we have that, we can then go back to this page here and you'll see that our parse library has finished downloading. So it tells you here to add the SDKs to your application. So what that means is that you go to your finder, you find the location of your download, you unzip the zip file, as the files into the folder here, you select the frameworks and you copy them and you paste them into your project. Option to copy items needed, we want to do that. And we're going to go finish. So it copies the files to application. What I like to do now is just to create a new group, so like a new folder, call it frameworks. And then just put all those framework files into the frameworks group, just to make it neat. All right, so now I just move that to the bottom of my list here. Uh, it's purely house cleaning. You don't need to do it that way, but I just like to keep my frameworks in a frameworks group folder, which is over there. The next thing they'll ask you to do is add the dependencies. All right, so this time you need to now go into your pause app project. So you get this screen over here. Click on your My Paws App target, or whatever you call your targets, your project. Scroll down, and you'll see at the bottom here we have linked frameworks and libraries. You're going to have to click on the plus button here. A little search bar pops up with a whole bunch of frameworks. And what you're going to do is go through each one of these guys here, search for them, and add them to your project. All right. So now the first one is audio, audio toolbox.framework. Click on add and add it to the bottom here. We're going to do that to the rest of them. So I have a list of these next to me here, so I'm going to go pretty quickly through them. But I'm essentially going through every one of those frameworks that was listed on that pause page. All right, so call location, mobile call. Services, Courts Call, Security Framework, the Store Kit. System Configuration Framework, the libs.dyliv, and then lastly, the lib sqlite3.dyliv. Okay, so you're going to be adding a lot of frameworks to your project right now. Um, the reason for this is because PARS, the, the PARS framework itself um, relies on a lot of these 
frameworks to to work. Um, for this demonstration I'm doing now, you probably don't need most of these, but you might run into problems, especially if you forget one of these out. If an object doesn't save correctly, you don't know why. It's normally because the framework um, was not added correctly or something along those lines. But these are the core frameworks that Pars recommends you add to your project. Um, so it's basically doing it from the get go, just in case as you create, create your application further, um, you don't run into any problems because you didn't add the framework from, from the beginning. All right, so we added all of the frameworks as they suggested over here. So now it says to connect your app to Pars. So you'll see now this is not Swift code, this is Objective-C. So this is kind of why I wanted to show you how to do it in the Swift version. And so basically we're going to now go to appdelegates.m file, okay? But before we do that, because it's Objective-C code, we need to import the pause header file. And the pause header file in our project, if we just have a look on the pause framework here, the, the pause file itself is Objective-C. And so we're going to need our Swift application to read and work with the Objective-C pause header file. And so a way to do that is to create, it's called a bridging header file, if I'm not mistaken. Basically, it's a file in your project which is created to help your application, your Swift application run with Objective-C files. So there's a couple ways to do this, but the quickest way to do this is to right-click on your MyPaws app, your root kind of project, you click on New File, and we're going to add a Objective-C file to this, our project. Now this file, you can name whatever you want because we're going to delete it. So name it, test, whatever, it doesn't matter. All you're going to do is just add a new file of Objective-C type into application. Once you create this file, it's going to ask you, would you like to configure an Objective-C bridging header? And you're going to say, yes, this is important. So we go, yes, we do want that. And that's all we want from this, all right? So you'll see now that the mypars app slash, well, dash bridging dash header dot h file appears in your project. Let's just move it into our proper grouping header structure. And now once you have that there, you can delete the test.m file we created. You no longer need that. We just created that so we could easily get the option to add the bridging header. That's what we care about. So now that we have the bridging header file, what we can do then is import the pause header file into that. And your application will look into this bridging header file for any Objective-C headers that it's looking for or needs. There's a couple other ones here I'm just going to import as well. That's I just previously prepared. Again, it's not necessary for this project per se, but it's nice to have. So now we're going to import the pars.h file as long as bolt and pars UI um, at the same time. So now that we have this, it's required for us to add these lines of code into your delicate file. Okay, so it's going to ask us to import this code over here um, to add it to the project so our delicate file. Because it's Objective-C code, we can't just copy and paste this into our project, so what we're going to do is add the Swift version. So I've added the Swift version here. You can pause the video and just kind of look and copy and paste this or rewrite it onto your project. But it's basically the Swift version of this. What's important now is to, we see your application ID and your client key. You want to take what they've given you here, copy that into your application ID, and then copy the client key into the client key section, like so. Okay. If we now, it's going to ask us now to compile and run. Um, let's do that. So I'm going to click start. It's built into my simulator, my iPhone 5S simulator. And if all goes well, the application launches and everything is fine. So you say build succeeded, which is good. And sorry, the Mac's quite slow. And my pause app has launched, and we've got no errors. That's good news. So everything was 
imported correctly, everything is running correctly, everything is good so far. So now the next thing you want to do is just kind of test adding an object to your past database. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. If we go back to our pause dashboard over here, we scroll down and now it says how to test the SDK. All right, so it mentioned again to include the pause header file, which we've done already, and then to copy and paste the sample code here to create a new test object and save it to your pause database. To show you what you mean by the pause database, I'm just gonna right click on the top of the, of the heading here to core, open link a new tab. Just gonna show you that in our pause test projects, we've got no classes to display. So this is our database right now and there's nothing to show in the database. So what we're gonna do is create a new test object. So you go to your main view controller file and then in the view to load section over here, we're gonna create a new test object. So the sample code they give you, again, is an objective C, but to do the Swift version, all you're gonna do is add the following code, which I'm just gonna copy and paste for you into my project. So again, you can pause the video right now, you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm creating a new test object, a variable test object, of PS object with a class name called test object. All right, the test object that I'm adding a new, so this is a new property of the test object class we've created called foo and we're adding bar as the value to it. We're then gonna take the test object and we're gonna save it in the background with a block. This with block is important in the sense that if you save it in background without the block, um, your application might complain that you know, there's some sort of methods running in the background which could cause problems. So I don't know the technical details exactly what happens with this, but just trust that it's best to save in background with block for this demonstration. Um, it then does a success. If it is successful, we then print a line called test objective saved. If it fails for whatever reason, we then print a line to error saving test objects. Okay, so what we're going to expect now is when we run the application again, application is going to run and then it's going to save, if, if it does save successfully, it's going to save a new file into or a new object into our parse test application on our parse database. So let's try that out. So we click start. The build succeeded, application has launched. Look in the bottom of here, test object saved. So we got to this point here and according to application, it saved the object successfully. So if we go back now to our past database and refresh our data, we'll see now that we have one test object with the bar value in the foo property and that is that. All right, so you created a new application in Swift. You've taken the pause SDK, you input into your project you added all the necessary frameworks to it, and you successfully saved an object to your database. Thanks for watching this video. Um, I hope it proved useful to you. It was a quick introduction on how to get PARS integrated into a application of yours so you can get it into the App Store pretty quickly without worrying about creating up servers or databases, etc. I hope to continue the series with a whole bunch of other videos such as how to implement a login feature, um, how to save users, you know, social logins, etc., and some other maybe more intermediate to advanced things like uh, server-side code and cloud code, etc. But till then, thanks again for watching. If you like the video, subscribe. If you have any comments, please comment below, and I look forward to any discussions that we can have. Thanks a lot, and cheers. Bye.